The process by which our cells build glycogen molecules is relatively complicated and actually consists of many individual processes. And all these processes basically work together to ultimately synthesize that glycogen molecule. So as we discussed in the previous lecture, before we can actually attach a glucose molecule onto a growing polysaccharide chain, we have to activate that glucose molecule. We have to make it much more reactive. And so what we do is we take a glucose <clears throat> we take a glucose one phosphate and we transform it into a uridine diphosphate glucose, UDP glucose. And the UDP glucose is much more active and now an enzyme known as glycogen synthase can actually synthesize an alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond, attach that glucose onto that elongating chain. Now the thing about glycogen synthase is it cannot simply begin from scratch. It actually requires a primer and that primer has to be more than four glucose molecules long. So the question that I'd like to begin in this lecture is what exactly synthesizes that primer that allows the glycogen synthase to begin the elongation process to begin building that glycogen molecule and creating the alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. So it's basically an enzyme known as glycogen glycogenin. So before glycogen synthase can begin glycogen synthesis, another enzyme called glycogenin must create a glycogen primer. And this primer is a short sequence of glucose molecules which are connected by alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds. Now glycogenin is a dimer molecule. It consists of two identical polypeptide chains. And so what the glycogenin does is it basically creates the primer from scratch. It creates the primer by basically using the activated glucose molecule, the uridine diphosphate glucose molecules. And as soon as that primer is actually synthesized by glycogenin, that's when glycogen synthase actually takes over and begins synthesizing the alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds. Now, the thing about glycogen synthase is not only does it actually require that primer, but it can only synthesize the alpha 1,4 glycosidic bonds. It cannot create the alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds that we also find in glycogen. So what exactly creates these alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds? Well, before we discuss the enzyme that actually creates these alpha 1,6 uh, glycosidic bonds, let's answer the following important question. Why do these branching points, remember the alpha 1,6 glycosidic bonds actually create the branching points in glycogen, why do these branching points actually exist? And generally, how do these branching points in glycogen actually benefit the molecule as a whole? Well, there are two important benefits of these branching points. Remember that in skeletal muscle cells or in liver cells or any other cell of our, of our body that contains these glycogen, the glycogen molecules are stored in tiny granules found in the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm is predominantly water and water is a polar molecule. And ultimately what branching does is it increases the solubility of the glycogen inside that cytoplasm, inside these tiny granules found in the cytoplasm of the cell. Now another important thing that adding these branching points does is it actually increases the rate at which glycogen synthesis and breakdown actually takes place. Why? Well, remember that glycogen breakdown and synthesis actually takes place on the terminal non-reducing uh, residues of that polymer. And so adding branches to glycogen increases the number of terminal glucose residues, which raises the rate of glycogen synthesis and breakdown. So if we compare this linear polymer to this branched polymer, we see that we have many more branching points here. And as a result, we have many more of these terminal non-reducing glucose residues than compared to this particular case. And so the rate at which synthesis and breakdown takes place on this molecule is much higher than on this linear molecule.
So now that we know why this process takes place, let's discuss how it actually takes place. So what's the enzyme that forms these alpha-1,6 glycosidic bonds? Well, the enzyme is known as glycogen branching enzyme. And what it basically does is it synthesizes these alpha-1,6 glycosidic bonds that lead to the branching of glycogen. So what the enzyme actually does is it first breaks an alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond bond and it detaches a group of glucose molecules that are usually seven residues in length. So this group that we're detaching basically must contain a terminal non-reducing residue and we'll see exactly what that looks like in just a moment. So this glycogen branching enzyme detaches a group of seven or more glucose residues that contain a terminal residue and attach that group via an alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond somewhere on the interior of that particular glycogen molecule. Now, the branching, uh, the branching enzyme actually requires two things. Firstly, it requires that the original glycogen chain on which we begin working on is at least 11 uh, residues in length. And it also requires that it is placed at least four residues away from any pre-existing branching point. And to see what all that means, let's take a look at the following hypothetical example. So let's suppose this is our initial glycogen molecule that we begin with. So we have all these alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds here. We have the, all these alpha-1,4 glycosidic bonds here. And this one bond here is the alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond. So so this is our pre-existing branching point. Now what the glycogen branching enzyme requires is the segment that it detaches must be around seven residues in length, so usually seven or more. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And one of these, this one here at the end, is a terminal non-reducing residue. What that means is on the fourth carbon, it contains a free hydroxyl group. And so now what this enzyme does is it cleaves this alpha-1,4 glycosidic bond and it basically detaches this entire segment. Now, what it does next is, is it basically attaches it via an alpha-1,6 glycosidic bond somewhere around this region, but it must attach it so that it exists at least four residues away from that pre-existing branch. So if we count, for example, one, two, three, four, it has to create it on the fifth one here. It has to be four full glucose residues away from that pre-existing one. And so this is where we can hypothetically place that branching point. So now we have one, two alpha one, six glycosidic bonds. So this is the process by which our cells are actually capable of synthesizing these glycogen molecules.